Okay, so back to meditation. Have any of you received messages or downloads while meditating lately that that you want to share? No. Okay, who okay, raise your hand whoever's meditated at least three times this week. <laughs> Robert. <laughs> Emily. Um, I know it, it is like going to the gym. I swear. It, it, even with me. It's like, do you know how if you ever go to the gym and it feels so good and you're like, why haven't I been coming here? And then you start going mm -hmm. again. And yeah. then you get busy with your life and you stop going to the gym and it just gets put off to the side. And then maybe a couple months later, you go to the gym and you're like, oh my God, this feels so good. And meditation yeah. is a lot like that. And if you can, so some, some tips are, because it really, really is key to expanding your conscious awareness outside your physical body and to pick up energy from the air. And so you can anyways, but it just makes it stronger. So however strong you are at doing that, you will get stronger. And some tips about meditation. If you could even dedicate 15 minutes a day, that's hardly anything, right? Look at all the TV or social media, just 15 minutes. And if you take that 15 minutes and you anchor it to an activity you already have, right? So whether it's after breakfast or after dropping off the kids or after coming home from work, if you anchor it, that will help establish it as more of a routine for you. And there's that, that exercise I put in there, the 555, you don't have to do it that way, but that can help, especially if you're new, because you <laughs> practice focusing first on something, which also stops your busy mind, it's right? And, and then you practice just relaxing. You can breathe in, breathe, breathe in love, breathe out love, just totally relax for the five minutes. But then you'd be setting your timer. Um, one of the spiritualist churches that I went to, that was a requirement. And we have, we're required to have a notebook and we were re required to bring it to every class. They didn't check it for us. They didn't judge us but we went over the notebook where because the last five minutes you just sit there with your pen in your hand and you're in a receiving mode you're asking your spirit guides to give you messages that you can receive and what i would do if you choose to do that is if if i was in that receiving mode so i'm trying to have my mind blank and then when i receive I might, I would put the message, but if I wasn't sure if it was me or spirit, I would put a question mark. And if I knew it was from spirit, I'd put a star, you know, and if I, I thought it was probably me, I would probably wouldn't write it. But so the thing is of not judging yourself as well. And the first couple months you meditate, the key really above all else is just getting into a routine, just making a commitment to a routine. So the first step to meditation is relaxing. So if you were going to say, okay, when I get home from work, before I make dinner and do all this, I'm going to go up to my room for 15 minutes. Kids are screaming. You know, I'm just going to go in my room, shut my door, and I'm going to turn on. You can, in, in the end, you'll, months later, when you start really communicating with your spirit guides, uh, you'll sometimes want it quiet, but at, at the beginning, if you're just establishing a routine, it's totally fine to put on a guided meditation like that one. I put the link in the comments last time that we did, the 10-minute meditation. It's completely fine. It's completely fine if all you do is breathe in, breathe in love, breathe out love, breathe in love, or you could look up a say uh breathing exercises which i'll put into the group but the one i have is like 30 minutes long you can do that if you actually did that breathing exercise without any expectation regardless of receiving psychic input you are going to feel so relaxed you'll feel so good if possible you want to be comfortable so if you get good at meditating and you're at work and your clothes aren't that comfortable 
you could still go out to your car for five minutes and meditate. But if you have a choice and you're at your house, it's good to just be in clothes that don't restrict your body. You know, you don't need your waistline too tight, squishing your stomach while you're trying to meditate because it's distracting, right? So you just want to be able to relax. And do you guys have any questions about that? I have about a question meditation? about the breathing. About, okay. I have a, about the breathing. So I've been, I was doing a lot of those like heavy breathing where you're like breathing in and then you're holding it and then you're breathing. And, and then you're breathing out. I'm on a call. Um, and then you're breathing out for a certain amount of time. And you almost, they say like it almost releases like um, like DMT or something that you can get mm -hmm. into a hypnotic state because it's felt like very powerful at times where I'm breathing and I just all of a sudden I just start to feel like enclosed and you feel like a lot of pressure on your head. Like, yeah. And I was wondering whether that was a phys physical response that you have or is that a spiritual response? I would say that's both. But it is a spiritual response. When you feel the pressure up here, it's usually your third eye is opening. Okay. And that's common. Like I felt that a lot of times. One time when I was doing a reading, it was really weird. My third eye was already open. I could feel these spirit guides in the room and the spirit guide came across and leaned over me. And it was like they did something to my third eye and there was like a section pop. So that feeling and the feeling of expansion it's both. It's both. It's it's spiritual. It's the physical part of that part of your brain coming front and forward, right? So that you've turned off the busy part and now the part that's kind of like an antenna, right? This The pineal gland, it's like an antenna. And so, if, yeah, that can release some DMT, which DMT comes into your body at 40 days gestation and a surge of it when you leave your body. So it, it opens, helps open your third eye to the spirit world. So that's a really good, good thing to do for sure. Yeah. And, you know, Ian, don't expect some super profound thing right away and don't give up. Like I've said many times when trying to meditate, like say I want to communicate with my daughter, I've had actual experiences where it's just like when I'm doing mediumship, communicating with her during meditation, but it might be one out of 20 times. I might try and try and try, and I could feel her around me, but I mean where she's actually giving me information just like when I'm doing a reading. And if I gave up on the 10th time or the 15th time, I would never experience the, the amazing beauty that that can be experienced right so persistence dedication and even just a short amount of time just 15 minutes a day and and it will bring you just peace also i think peace besides connecting with spirit besides psychic development it'll bring you inner peace because of, of the what the changes it does to your brain so let's Donna, see. do you ever do you ever try uh oh. Automatic writing? Y yes. Do you know what's so funny is I have a folder on that. And I was thinking of doing this week's on that. But I can do next week's um, because I because the reason I didn't do it for this week, which is so funny that you brought that up, is because I need to tell everyone to have a notepad to write on. Right? Okay, but I can answer a question about it real quick. So if you guys want to have a notepad, start having a notepad and paper. Um, then we'll start doing also some exercises where you, you know, write a little bit. And so with automatic writing, there's a couple different things. And, and it's not that either one is better or the goal, right? There's inspirational writing. Say you get into a meditative state or you're just came home from church and you're on this kind of religious high and you want to write something. Or you just feel real inspired by spirit and you want to write, but it's you writing it. Okay, so that's inspirational writing and that's okay too, right? And then automatic writing where the spirits are actually doing it. They say you could use your non-dominant hand and not even be mm -hmm. looking and you would be mm -hmm. writing. And that's how you would kind of be able to know the difference. You could try using your dominant hand that you normally write with and don't look at the paper and it, if it was 100% the spirits it wouldn't you wouldn't even need to be looking at it 
So most people are doing inspirational writing when they think they're doing kind of automatic or spirit writing. But either way, uh, I think you'll get beautiful things out of it. You know, and a lot of books, the book, the book I wrote, uh, wrote was written with this one. Mm -hmm. it, oh, I, I had to do the blur because I'm at my dad's house. But um, th this was done with my daughter and one of my spirit guides. And I also kept checking with them on the EVP, which is electronic voice phenomena. So it was like I would try to understand, you know, meditate, understand what they were showing me, write about it, and then talk on the EVP. So it was, it was pretty interesting. So that, that was, I would call inspirational writing, even though I was still doing it with spirits. I was consciously helping and working and being part of it. So any more questions? So when are, when are our meetings? I don't think I've ever actually written them down. When are they supposed to be? If you text me and tell me what day it is, then I'll be <laughs> no, <I'm just> joking. <laughs> okay, they're supposed to be the second and fourth Wednesday of every month. And then the third Saturday of every month. Okay. Yeah, second this weekend and it's fourth Wednesday. Wednesday. And, the third and we're going to try 10 a.m. And if that works for everybody, then we'll stay stick with that. And if, if it doesn't work for everybody, then we will go back to 11. But just, you know, that might be easier for people on the East Coast if they have other things to do. Can I ask you a quick question also? Sure, yeah. I, e I emailed you through my Gmail and I also did through your website. If, if, you, if I email you through my, your website, I, I can't, I have to put, include my email in it. Is that correct? So the Reverend Donna Serafina at gmail.com really is the best one if you want to, uh, if you want me to see it. And I'm well, just, I, I'm just now working on putting up a new website. Okay. I emailed you a few times. I wanted to schedule I have two, meeting yeah. last month. So oh, I'm you have? You, yeah, I have. A, I'm I have two. <gasps> okay. <laughs> Um, so it's Reverend Donna Serafina at mm -hmm. gmail.com. I know. See, if, I, if I'm not doing, say when I put up that Brian Koberger reading that got like hundreds of thousands of views or whatever, there was a thousand emails a week mm -hmm. in my email for about Woo! four months straight. Okay. I still have not got to all them. And <laughs> there's no way to. There's no way to yeah, answer no them or even, or even read them all. And Just yeah. So if you've emailed me, it you're not going to piss me off or anything. Just resend it, and it will pop it to the top of the list again. Just say, "Oh, okay. just resending this," and then if you okay. have any anything else, and then putting put, like, in the subject, psychic school or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Psychic that's a good school, idea. Like, yeah, and I also do one-on-one. -on -one. I, -on -one. I also do one-on-one -on -one, uh, mentorship as well. Okay, so the thing to know is that in the, the space between us, the air between us, all information is stored. Every thought you've ever had is stored. Can you believe that? Ooh. Every thought, is that every the records, action. The, what? Isn't that called in the, there's Akashic Records? Yeah, yeah. Is that and where and that might is even that be a place. Actually? That might even be yeah. like kind of astral projecting to a certain place. So either way you want to look at it, um, Maybe the Akashic records is stored in the inner in the energy field between us. Mm -hmm. I, I know in one astral projection, I was in a place that felt like this giant hall of records, but at the same time, that same energy is all around us. It's really trippy, and that's what meditation does: is it just expands your awareness into your energy field? Yeah, I can see that. That's called a Taurus field, and my spirit guide Rebecca, I I took a photo. She actually made one of these in the corner of my room and she told me to take a picture of there and she made a Taurus field. Uh, she was teaching me about that. But there's this energy field around your body and, and when you expand your mind and open your pineal gland through meditation, you're expanding your awareness into the energy field. And then you can pick up more information from the energy field. Some of the... Um, and you all know about the pineal gland, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's our third eye. Right.
And I like to show this to people so they understand how mediumship works. Do you see the um, two people? Mm -hmm. the, two, the two people and, the, and then they're like have this ball of energy around them. I try to show people that because when you're in the physical body, which is literally just a space suit, you are not who you look at in the mirror, the, the ultimate you. Okay, the, this you who you look at in the mirror is your spacesuit for this life experience, right? And my personal belief is you have lots of life experiences, but e either way that you don't, you can believe that or not, just know that when people are in the spirit world and you extend your consciousness outside into this ball of energy and they approach, that's how you connect. The two balls of energy that surround you is how you connect with the spirit people, right? And so then you can like start it. to see just how important this meditation becomes if you want to get stronger. Now, so, some people, it's already so strong when they're born. Like there was this one lady at the spiritualist church and she said, I mean, she said when she meditates, it gets too strong. So, mm. you know, it's all a personal thing, but those are just some things to help you understand uh, what happens when you meditate and why it's so important. When I was traveling once and my, uh, my spirit guide took me into the realm, uh -huh. it, was, it was incredible because what you saw was you didn't, you didn't see people, but you saw the ball, you know, the, 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 the ball of light, like the soul. Uh -huh. And you could, you could, if it's real misty, if, if you made a ball in your, in your sight, and then you just surrounded it by mist, just misty, 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 barely. That, that's how I've seen souls. Right. And um, yeah, it's, a, it's amazing. You can have some amazing experiences. And that brings me to another thing is in the spirit world, I like to say intention is everything. And, you know, it's not everything, but it's pretty important. So if your intention when you sit down to meditate is, you know, first of all, I want only that which is the, the love and the light and that which is good and for my highest good to be able to connect with me. And I'm asking to get to know my spirit guides and, and have a closer communication that's your intention to set that intention, then that will work. But if you're kind of going through life, which is fine, if you're just going through life, a purely physical experience, um, that might not happen. And it's because of your intention also that brings them forward. And it's also because of your intention when, you know, spirit people will try to communicate with you anyway. But if your intention is that you want to communicate with them, then they're more likely you'll be able to sense them better and that kind of thing. So that's real important at the beginning is, and if you're meditating and say, like Emily said, she wanted something and she couldn't find it. If you set your intention when you're meditating, uh, you know, that you want to see the right person or you want to do this or you want to do that, then while you're meditating, you may receive information or even if you're used to meditating, you may receive downloads when you're not even in a meditative state. And a download was all of a sudden you'll feel information coming into your mind that is not from you, but it contains a lot of useful, you know, information from spirit. Yes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Go ahead, Diane. Go ahead, Diane. Um, is there uh, a big difference between praying? and um setting an attention like if i were to say um you know god please help my daughter find a job or something uh, is there a difference between that and setting an intention or it's very similar i mean they say praying is like talking to God and meditation is like listening to God. So that doesn't really answer your question though. So it's like, is setting your intentions, you would pray and maybe set your intention while praying. 
because your prayers might include more like asking God to be in your life, which also could be your intention. So they kind of overlap slightly, Mm. uh, slightly different, but you could set your intention during your prayer before you you meditate. Do you say something like I'm setting this intention or how do you (laughs) in, in my life? Okay. Oh, I wanted to just a second, Emily, after, after I wanted Mm. to read you this. Okay, so this is actually perfect because it kind of answers your question. Mm-hmm. And I was experimenting with chat GPT, which is mind-blowing for being able oh, to cool. illustrate spiritual stuff. I'm just sitting there. They kicked me off it. Can you imagine being kicked <laughs> off a computer program? I'm paying for a subscription, <laughs> and they're like, this is enough for this session. You, you, you need to take a break. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> but this is on page 14 of my book. It says this, and it's, it kind of answers your question, maybe. It says, I wrote prayers to God to open the spirit world and connect me with my child. I did not know this at the time, but many spiritual laws are in operation in the world of spirit. One of them is called non-interference. If you want to feel God or the angels, you must ask for them. The same is true of your loved one in spirit. Your connection with your loved ones will be much stronger if you ask and permit them to connect with you. So that's kind of like, that was me setting my intention of my meditation where I wanted to hear from my daughter. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Remember anyone you're watching, whether it's me or anyone else, it's that person's experience. And sometimes that person's read books and then they, say stuff Mm -hmm. and sometimes it's their experience but either way it's through the filter of their experience and and, anything you receive from me too which is i explain to everyone all the time whatever you learn from me is part of your tool toolbox right it's part of you know what makes sense to you and what tools you want to use for your future and when you meditate and you receive from your spirit guides that's more dependable or as what as what not so much to believe everybody else's theories but just experiences are slightly different but no there's an amazing world outside of our perception and we can communicate with it and i believe the fact that every human being is born with a pineal gland means that we are all supposed to be able to if we want and if it was not true, then only some of us would have a pineal gland. You know what I mean? Some of the things that might block you from this, from blocking you, one, the number one thing that will block you is fear, right? So we have a society where every time, almost every movie where there's a supernatural event, it ends up being a horror movie. Is that right or is that right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Right? So they're trying to scare you from connecting with spirit because as long as they do that, they are the ones in control of your mind. The the elite or the Hollywood or the corporations, whatever, whatever they want you to believe from birth to death, if they can keep you from opening your own spiritual awareness, then they have control over what you believe and what you think and how you spend your time and what you value. But when you start opening it, then you figure out for yourself. So the first thing to do is let go of that fear that's been that's totally programmed in our society for uh, making people afraid to connect with the beyond. And then religious beliefs. So if you were raised, you know, in a religion that tells you that this is you're going to hell you know, and I don't know how many comments I've deleted that say I'm the wife of Satan or whatever. (laughs) You know, it's like, they don't do it so much anymore, but they used to do that a lot. And, you know, go home. Maybe I made it a forbidden word or something, but they are programmed. I just delete a lot of them. Yeah, and and like, you won't be able to see this, but there's over 39, uh, I'm going to do a video sometime. There's over 39 verses in the Bible that talk about things like where Jesus says, whatever I can do, you can do. 
and here's the nine mm -hmm. gifts from God. And when thy two eyes become one, the body will be filled with light. That's that right there. Jesus is talking about opening the pineal gland. And somehow that made it through <laughs> all 40 something rewrites of the Bible. Right. Yeah. So, and I'm telling you, Catholic people, right? When they come into the <laughs> spiritualist church, they pick up mediumship right away, shockingly. And because, and this is like, okay, for a while I was holding a monthly, I was doing weekly circles, but I was doing a monthly circle for just for mothers who lost a child to do their specific needs, right? And this one lady, she would come in, she would sit down, she wanted to hear from her son, but she wouldn't participate in trying to do it because she said she was Catholic and it was against her religion. So oh. one day, she, it had been about like the fourth month for her, one day she comes in and she kind of threw herself on my couch and she said, you know what? I've been talking to saints my whole life. And they say that's okay, but they tell me I can't talk to my son. And then she crossed her arms. She goes, I don't think so. <laughs> and what was funny was when the circle started, I couldn't shut her up. Like, you're, normally you're supposed to share the space. And, but I didn't, I didn't want to shut her down. You know, I thought, okay, if she continues after about three months, maybe I'll have a little talk with her. But I wanted her to, yeah, open up. And she was getting a lot right. I mean, she was nailing it because in that religion, they're taught to speak with a sp the saints, to receive messages from saints, right? Or at least that's what she was saying. And so just naturally, I notice when they come into the spiritualist church, they're actually very good at that. And you know what? And then in one workshop I took from a psychic medium named Tony Stockwell. He's in England. I don't know if you know him, but he said, if you were in India, Hindu, and you tried to, oh, I'm going to make a living as a medium. He said, you would never be able to make a living as a medium because everyone mm -hmm. does it. Everyone receives messages. They'll be sitting around in a circle working and they'll go, oh, you know what? I had a dream of your uncle last night. He was telling me this and telling me that. It's part of their culture and their religion to it's okay. And see, we put our own blocks in by these social norms, by this fear, by these religion, and even just self-doubt. Like, what am I receiving? And part of that, part of giving over the self-doubt is allowing yourself to be wrong. Because it, I, it really is, I hate being wrong. I'm a perfectionist. I beat myself. I'm my worst enemy for that. But it's when you learn the most when you learn the most mm. because you're wrong and then you start picking up like you were saying emily about the discernment of when i'm receiving it's almost like sometimes i think of it like a scarf that just kind of floats down mm. and and it, it comes in and it's so so close to your imagination so you just kind of relax right you just relax and allow it and then see when you're wrong and you're right and some of the exercises i made the little videos of where you know your phone rings right just wait a second before you pick it up just allow yourself it's you're not trying to think with your frontal lobe what you're trying to do is just allow the energy to tell you who's on the phone I mean, a lot mm -hmm. of times when it rings don't you kind of know who it is and then you pick it up oh, yeah and it so that's one thing that can just, if you do these little exercises that you don't even have to go out of your way, you don't have to allot time for, like say you're going to a new movie theater or a new restaurant, are they going to have carpet? Are they going to have brick floor? What color is it going to be? What color are the booths going to be? And ask yourself that before you go and then just see if you were right or not. You know, so just little things like that you can make up to start or if someone calls you on the phone, say someone calls you on the phone, you could sit there in your mind and go, show me what the person's wearing, right? <laughs> if they didn't just <laughs> And then you ask them, what are you wearing? <laughs> no, yeah, just say, oh, I'm practicing my psychic stuff. What are you wearing? You know what they'll probably say? 
They'll tell you and they'll go, tell me if you have any messages for me. Tell me if you're picking anything up. Like most people love it. They love it. I was at the grocery store the other day and I knew my dad was there. I literally, I knew it and he was there and like he pop popped around the corner. Like I've been noticing that a lot lately, like where I like literally know what's some, what's coming. Yeah. It's really weird or somebody, you know, that's what meditation does. It, 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 it's a whole different lifestyle. And, and I'm not perfect either. I'll sit there and, and tell other people to meditate. I do meditate a lot. Um, but you know, I should be, you know what I mean? It's easy to say, and I'm telling you what you should do. And if you want to develop quicker, then do it. And it won't stop you. If you don't do it, though, you can still develop, you, you know, but still, like you're saying, Emily, these things happen and you get these frequent downloads. And like, I'll just tell you one more and then we'll get on to some exercises. So I signed up to give messages at church right? It's called message bearing. And that's what we're actually going to practice today. Um, so I signed up to give messages at church and at messages at church, you just give a two or three minute here. We'll just do a couple things or something because there's different people and we want to practice. But at church, you just stand on the stage, you ask someone you feel drawn to, do they want a message? And then you tap in with their energy and see what you get. So I had signed up every other week for like six years. I did it for a long time. And when I signed up for October 28th of 2017, I got this download when I was signing up. Why are you signing up for that? You're not going to be giving messages anyway. And I'm like, <laughs> well, that's weird. And then I got this download. It was like, a visual of me on the 805 freeway, which is in San Diego. So 805 freeway, they showed me receiving a phone call that my mother had died. And I'm like, well, she was, she was sick. So she was, she was in a convalescent. So, you know, it's not a total shock, but, but it's like, so they were showing me what the visual was, was I'm driving to church. I'm going on the 805 freeway. And they're showing me that my mother's died. So there's really no point in me signing up to give messages. And I thought, well, I'm not going to cross my name off just based on this download. Da, da, da. So <laughs> three times during the month. <laughs> oh. He's muted. Can't hear. You're muted. Can't hear you, Donna. Can you, can you hear me now? Yep. Yes. yes. I better not touch that. So, okay, so three times during the month, I received the same download. I'm driving over the 805 bridge. I'm getting a phone call. My mother's died, so I'm not going to be able to give messages at church. Well, on that morning, I woke up around five in the morning and I thought, I don't even know if I should put makeup on. Like, and I just laid in bed and then I wanted to call a convalescent home, but I didn't want to freak them out. Like, oh, I'm getting visions, you know, so <laughs> I, <laughs> so, I just laid there and then literally at 11 a uh, no 8 8 a.m. 8 a.m. and 11 minutes 8 11 a.m. my half sister called me cuz she was in another state my mom was in another state and she said I'm I'm I just wanted to let you know that mom has passed and I've been sitting with her for the last 5 minutes and and I'm just calling you now you know, to tell you. So that would make it about 8.06 if she was actually watching the clock a little. So the, what I saw was the 805 freeway, but what they were showing me was the exa almost exact time of death down to the minute. Down to the minute. Weeks ahead. The day and the time of my mother's death. And then sure enough, I called the pastor and I said, you know, I'm coming to church, but I just was notified my mother passed. And so I don't want to give messages, but I still want to be at church. And it, it was really neat. But I thought it was really neat that the spirit people were proving to me how close Definitely that they could real. call, how close they could see. I mean, you could know people are waiting for them on the other side. They, they knew weeks ahead of time, the minute of her death, really. And I, I just thought that was really cool. Yeah, that's crazy. So if you give people messages, like you're out at the store and all of a sudden you're like, 
Wow, that lady in front of me. I'm getting a me- <laughs> I'm getting a visual of her husband bonking her on the head. No, I'm getting a visual of some guy's gonna break break. Well, you will start seeing stuff. You know, <laughs> it's like I'm I'm getting a visual of someone's might break into her house. I'm getting a visual of someone climbing into her house, and she's a total stranger. Should I just tell her maybe she should make sure her windows are locked? And that Tony breaks. I mean, you got to be careful and filter yourself, right? It's, and you're starting out and you want to practice and stuff like that. You know, you could ask people, but you don't want to say things that scare people or humiliate people. Um, you know, and what if, what if you're, you definitely want to be careful about all that. But, but then there's like, one mother I know, she called her daughter in another state. She begged her not to leave her apartment that day. She could see her daughter dying that day. She's like, please. She called her and, and her daughter said, look, mom, we're just going to the store to get ice cream. We're just walking to the end of the block. It's not that big of a deal. Her daughter went to, it was across one intersection, an 18-year-old who was stoned on drugs and alcohol went through the red light and uh, killed her daughter that day. Oh. So she saw the death of her child, but she still wasn't able to prevent it. And that's another thing. Oh, it's a huge lesson. Don't expect to be able to, you can't live someone else's life. You can't prevent it. I have another friend who he was in the Reverend program and he dropped out because he saw, and he was a good psychic, but he saw his, his best, platonic female friend in Hawaii that she was going to drown and she was on vacation and he called her and begged her not to go swimming that day and she did and she drowned mm -hmm. and so he felt well what good is this gift and what good is mm -hmm. developing this if I can't stop anyone because mm -hmm. they do what they want anyway so if you try to do give anyone psychic information or you even start doing readings they're still going to turn around and do whatever they want I wouldn't, <laughs> <laughs> I know. but you can't take ownership. You can't take ownership um, or feel responsible for something other people do because it's still their free will and still their mm -hmm. life. So, so you will start, if you start meditating and, and practicing and stuff, you'll start picking up more things, but that's a good thing to know. Cause a lot of people are real hard on themselves about that. Yeah. So the thing went in public. So if you're in a private reading, there might be more personal things that you say. But if you're in public, like in this group, you don't say super personal things. You say um, a, a public message should always uplift or heal or guide, right? You never tell people what to do also. Like even on the EVP, on the electronic voice phenomena, if I said, I want your opinion to the spirit guide, it would be silence, silence. But if I say, could I please have some guidance? It's really weird how words matter to them. Mm -hmm. I would like some guidance on this. Mm -hmm. Then they'll start giving me information, but it's up to me. I have to make the choices, mm -hmm. right? And it's the same with you as a psychic or a medium. So and just remember, it's not about you. It's just about the person receiving it and and getting it from spirit or from the energy field if it's psychic. So, okay, so who here wants a reading or not a reading, but um, Shauna? Okay, so did we did we do your relative before? You're muted. Your microphone's muted. Yeah. We, we did my grandmother, but nothing really resonated. I even asked my mom and nothing really like. Okay. So do you want a psychic reading or a spirit reading? <gasps> a psychic reading. Okay. So, so when someone asks for a psychic reading, they're not usually asking to connect with their loved ones. Although sometimes a loved one might pop in. They're asking for kind of their day-to-day -day life they they're looking for a little guidance or a little kind of insight see what someone else picks up so what we'll do is spend uh maybe four minutes and now when when it's your turn to talk if you want to talk you're not going to be doing a full reading on shauna 
And sometimes people get super excited and they're like, oh, I'm on top of it. I got it all. And they want to go into a five minute reading, but it's not that because you're sharing the space and everyone's trying to kind of see what they can get. So you only need to get like two or three things. Um, again, you don't say things that embarrass or harm or, you know, that kind of stuff, but just see if you can pick up anything guidance. If you, if you're, Feeling, if you're trying to tap in and you're feeling like you're not getting anything, what you could do is you could say, okay, show me a color that relates to Shauna. And I'm talking about like blue or what, blue or red or purple. And wh why am I getting this? And why am I seeing this? There's That's called like a doorway. So there's little doorways you can use or, or okay, I'm looking at Shauna and I'm thinking about her dream vacation or a vacation she's on and, and just see if you get that or... I'm thinking about Shauna and I'm thinking about what she does for work and if she likes it and, and stuff like that. So you can, you can just open and see what you get, or you can do little things like that to see if it kind of like a little ball rolling, right? A little ball rolling. So we'll do four minutes and at four minutes, then I'll just ask you guys to share if you've picked up anything um, um, for Shauna and I'm going to do it too. So. Okay, Sh um, Sean, I'll, st I'll start, right, just to sh kind of show. And you could tell me I'm all wrong and it's okay. See, that's the other thing, too. You can't worry about whether they say it's all wrong and stuff like that. So, like, say if I was at church, I'd be like, Shauna, would you like a message? And then she says, yes. You never give someone a message if they, like, give you a dirty look or say no or whatever. Um, okay, so. Let's see. So they were showing me being uh, you being um, very gregarious, outgoing, like when 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 you got your spark on, right? When you're like super uh, vibrant and and you your energy is flowing to the world, right? And then that is the time when you're most vulnerable to somebody trying to ask you to do something that takes your time that. Um, is something that you don't really want to do, but you said yes because you were in such a good mood. And so what they were showing was um, if you just had a phrase, and you might already, see, you might already, this is just what I was seeing. I could already be seeing what you already do. I don't know. But if you just have a phrase that when you're in a super good mood and somebody, see, somebody uses that, that they might even get you in that mood, you know, oh, tell me this story, tell me that story. And it's a story that makes you all, you know, energetic and happy. And then they ask you for what it is, was their intention to ask you for. Um, if you just have one saying, some saying that you just turn around and say, I'll have to get back to you about that. And and don't ever let anybody like, um, or be aware <laughs> of anybody trying to take your time or sycophant off you um, when you're in that, open mode that's what they were showing me does that make sense to you yes <laughs> okay okay so that would be like a church message right okay. that would be like a church message and if you if you pick up anything again just remember it's positive uplifting or healing um or just something, but not, you never say things that are in public. You never say things that are embarrassing, no matter what you see. You never say any things that are embarrassing or will will make someone feel bad, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, okay, so who wants to try their hand? Okay, go, go ahead. Okay, Diane and then um, Suzanne. Okay. <clears throat> so I see her surrounded by flowers and... Um, I feel that the message is to communicate with flowers, to take time to spend with them, to meditate on them, and see them as having good intentions for you. But I see these beautiful flowers around you and you really enjoying them. So that's me. Does that make sense to you, Shauna? I mean, I love flowers. I love nature. Yes. Okay. And then Suzanne? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so the first thing that I got, um, um, I got that you're hardworking and that you've been like working, but it's, um, it's, I feel like everything that I wrote is like so general, so I don't know. Well, just um, say it anyway. Okay. But that your hardworking is going to be paying off 
um, that you have a good support system. Um, I did get the word money and then I tried to like think about, well, just like clear, not think. And then I was doing, doing something about the colors. So then I got, um, green. So then that kind of went back to the money. Um, and then I also got that winter's pretty rough for you and that, um, spring and summer's going to be a lot better. And that, um, I got something about trees too. Something about being in nature, I guess, is going to be good for you. And something about paying attention to your dreams. And that's all. <laughs> that's really good, Suzanne. That is. Okay, who wants to go next? Um, Caroline? Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. But Shana, is this somebody, have you got a, a daughter that's going, or son, that's um, oh. going to be graduating? I don't have any children. You don't have any children? I just saw her at the gym. Uh, no, oh, wait, let uh, Caroline finish, and then and then you okay. can go, Emily, I mean, after I just, that. I just saw, like, a graduation, um, one of those, like, robes, something about graduation. I don't know. Hmm. Okay, do you, Shauna, do you know anybody who's graduating, like any nieces or nephews? No, but I, I'm going to go back to school i just oh. see okay so there you go okay caroline let me stop you for a uh, perfect perfect caroline okay so so i'll just give you a crit crit critique okay so when you're going to do a psychic message you never ask questions oh. um, because oh. if you train yourself to get in the habit of that it's kind of like a crutch it's kind of like and you're trying to figure it out rather than yeah. just giving them what you get and making it make sense. So whereas Caroline, where you said, um, do you have children? And then she's saying no, but the reality is when you said, I'm just seeing a graduation robe. And then she says, I'm going back to school. So w in your message, that's what you would want to say is I'm seeing a graduation robe. Okay. okay. So but that was you, the first thing I kept getting. I'm thinking maybe she's got a son or daughter who's going to graduation. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. see you were trying to figure it out with your logical mind. Um, but yeah. once you just give what you get, um, it, it'll okay. mean something to them that you probably don't even know what it means to them. But, you know, if they have feedback, then that's how that works. So that's good. Okay. So you got something. It's just that's the way you, pr and you want to train yourself while you're doing this as you're growing with the proper etiquette. Because the last thing you want to be doing is standing on a stage going, tell me who in your, your family yeah. has the letter M in their name. And like, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can, so you always just want to start the proper etiquette. But you did good. Okay. Okay. So, Emily? Oh, I just saw something like something at the gym. It was just like a, her silhouette. At the a gym. gym. Yep. Where did she go? Shauna. Oh, there you are. Someone popped <laughs> off and you went up there. Okay. Um, uh, I don't know now, what did you say again? Like, what did you say? Yeah, I just saw her like in the, it, it was almost, it looked like a gym area, like a warehouse area. And it just, I just kind of saw her silhouette. Okay. So does that mean anything to you, Shauna? No, not really. Except yeah, I, have, I, I have a gym, a gym membership <laughs> that I that <laughs> probably need to get back to. Wait. Maybe that's why you're only a silhouette in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're, it was the energy of where you were at one time. I and, like it. <laughs> and another th another thing about that, besides that, is um, don't worry if they don't know what you're talking about. Because something could happen two days from now that was what you told them. They, they had no idea. They had no clue. And then, you know, all of a sudden they text you in the middle of the week and they're going to go, you know, you're not going to believe this, you know, <laughs> but I was here and this happened. So again, you don't worry about whether they don't know or not uh, when you're giving a message. Okay. Who's next? You got anything, Kelly? I got the color green. Like uh, I got the color green and then I got that. She's very, a very good inner community. Like she likes to give and a very good person. That's what I was getting in green. Ooh, green is good. So we know you're a good person. So <laughs> <laughs> that's always a good message. And then that's, that's an excellent message. <laughs> but that she's the second person who got green with you. And yeah. um, is your house green? Uh, 
It, what what is it with the green? Do you know? Do you have anything? I think it's it's money. I think money is a uh, is a good. <laughs> it's, it's been on my mind a lot. Your money a lot. Yeah. Yeah, because I I got I was starting to get something, but then I thought, oh no, I'm 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 sure she told me that because you were talking about inheriting your parents' house or something like that. Well, I live in my grandmother's. house. Yeah. So okay, so um, let's see, uh, Lorraine, do you have anything? Did you pick up anything? The first thing I picked up was finances. How there had been a uh, possible <laughs> concern about finances in the past. I also figured uh, um, received that there may be something that you're concerned about with your health, but I don't know what it was, um, and that you might be considering possibly something to do with your job, like a job change. And the last thing I got was that you like puzzles, possibly crossword puzzles. Mm -hmm. Job change, yes. Puzzles, um, I, I, I have a feeling it's not literal. I do love puzzles, not crossword puzzles, but I do like figuring things out. <laughs> like, like everything is a puzzle to me. Connect, like critically thinking. I'm always critically thinking. Yeah. Okay. Di did you go, Diane? Yeah. And I was just going to say with the color green, like I saw her with flowers, but I also didn't mention that I saw like, all these green trees around her but okay. she did bring up nature and loved being in trees with flowers so i just wanted to reinforce the green that i saw yeah that yeah a lot of people saw that okay robert did you did you go yet i haven't i didn't get anything i have a i was going to mention i have a problem meditating if i'm not actually listening to music mm -hmm. i'm finding i i, I get a million things running through my head Mm -hmm. <laughs> Every it, time I try and do it without without actual music running in the background. And you know that you could do that for a few months. So if you're willing to commit to a time, just 15 minutes, and you're, you know, attach it to something you already do, part of your routine. Yeah. Go ahead, listen to the music for 15 minutes. That there's nothing wrong with that. The most important thing is you're you're wanting to set this routine for yourself. And there will come a time, it, it could be three or four months into it, where all of a sudden you don't want that music. You don't want yeah. that music because you don't want anything blocking. But at the same time, you know, a couple of weeks later, you might go, you know, I really feel like having that music. And that's okay. That's to I mean, have you heard people complain on some of my readings? They're like, why do you have that music at the beginning? It's because <laughs> it's because I'm getting my brain attuned to relaxation Ooh. and reception right so it's if if what works for you is focusing on that music do that just do that every day and then let I, us I, know how that works i have a quick question um maybe i don't know if you already do this pay, playing your music before you start the school psychic school do you think that would be a good idea to kind of kind of move him into that meditation thought process right and and last week we did do a meditation we listened to a 10 minute meditation but right now i'm up at an hour away at my dad's and i don't have my yeah. little um speaker but that is a good thing and we're gonna start at least doing like a five minute meditation at the beginning it's an excellent thing to do like every time i do a reading almost you know almost every time i do a reading i meditate first yeah. Um, okay. So, who has not tried their hand at this? The ones we don't see are Elizabeth, Lucy, Lucy, Elizabeth? Leah, and Rosanna. Um, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, you want to see what you got? Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I more sense than feel. Well, I guess it's the same. That you're missing somebody. Really missing somebody. And then I also got you love when the sun is shining. You just adore the sun. That's it. Oh, I do adore the sun. I also love the moon too. I say hello to both of them. Being like, <laughs> so do I. Every morning when I open my curtains. Oh, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what about you, Lucy? Did you pick up anything? No. 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 Can I ask something? 
Yeah. I was. Is this doing... Therese? Yes. Okay, go uh, ahead. Uh, 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 um, my um, grandchildren, uh, 12 and th uh, 13, uh, came up uh, at once. Um, and I just wonder if there is someone around you, um, early teenager, a boy and a girl, especially a boy. No. Okay. And then that's, see, that's fine because that's just the kind of way you pick up it's so close. I can't even, there's no way to explain to people like how close it is to your imagination. Mm. Um, this kind of work and, and it's just trial and error, trial and error. Okay. So who didn't we have Rosanna? Do you want to, um, did you pick up anything? I don't even know if she's there or yeah. Leah. I think the only Hi. one. Oh, I'm sorry. So I actually got, um, I don't know who said puzzles, but I actually saw puzzle pieces. I didn't know what to make of that, but I did see that. And I saw flowers also, specifically sunflowers. Ooh. So there's a lot of sunshine. People are picking up a lot of sunshine references. And I know, see, the puzzle thing could be a puzzle you're working out. Mm. Or it could be, like you said, you like figuring things out. Mm -hmm. Like, I think one of the reasons I like doing those crime things is afterwards it really engrosses my mind it takes your mind off things right, right. if you're trying to figure something out mm -hmm. so uh i don't know but that that a lot of people are picking that up and then anybody that hasn't had a chance to go yet i don't know if rosanna's still here um okay well elizabeth lucy okay well that's good okay so that that's how about some homework where you ask one person in your life if they will just sit down for 15 minutes and let you practice a psychic reading on them. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, remember not to tell them what they are <laughs> or what they're thinking. Just tell them what you're picking up. And, and first you say what you get, and then if they're not sure you could try to say the feeling I have with it, like the interpretation I have, but it might be different. Just like the graduation thing. Remember that. Um, just say what you get. Keep it simple. Say what you get. And if it sounds silly to ask people, just picture me taking these workshops after my daughter died and knocking on doors on my cul-de-sac asking people asking neighbors if they'll come to my house and sit there for me while i practice my psychic abilities like people that i've been talked to i i, I did that because my goal was to do 100 readings before i started charging and mm -hmm. then i think i made it to about 80 readings when i realized do you know what when i tell people it's a hundred dollar minimum and then they can and it's more now but i i would say it's a hundred dollar minimum you can pay more if you want Mm -hmm. um but it, that's the minimum they would actually act much happier they were yeah. happier because they were giving me something and when i did the reading for free they got this great reading from a spirit loved one and then they'd look kind of guilty and kind of slink out of my house so that's besides at the beginning though at the beginning i mean i hate to say it like i even uh, lived next to kind of a meth house I got, because there's always people there, right? <laughs> so <I> would, <laughs> They're coming through. <laughs> I would see people there and I'd go up to the door and knock on it and go, well, does somebody here want to uh, hear from a loved one, want to come over to my house and let me practice on you? <laughs> and, and, you know, and different, different people that I never really talked to. So I did quite a few readings that way. <laughs> yeah. You know, and you, you could do that to someone in your life. That's your... um that's your homework this week. Just one person. And even if it's by phone, like say if you're bedridden or you don't get out, you could call somebody that you know. You could even call someone you know and say, I'm, you know, I'm practicing this psychic stuff. And, you know, don't worry about the people that will cut you off right away. Okay. Cause there's some people who go, yeah, tell me. And then they'll go, no, you know, they want right. to jump the gun before yeah. you have even said anything. No, 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 don't, don't let how other people react influence you. Okay. Cause you're, you're doing your spiritual growth. 
And if they're non-receptive, that's kind of their problem if they agreed to let you do that. So that's so one Okay, so, so is there... We, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. So should we pick a person that we don't know that well? Like probably, if I was probably just do the exercise and then whoever works. Because if you put too many stipulations, you'll go, oh, I couldn't find a person to agree to it that I don't know too well and I didn't feel like, you know getting dressed that day just don't just even if you know them like the back of your hand you can still do it i'm picking this up i'm picking that up i'm picking this up and um like as far as mediumship i have other mothers who've lost a child who like went to my circle for years and stuff and at this point they'll trade readings with me oh, so i'll do a reading for them and because those readings are longer you know, like an hour long and stuff. And then the next time they'll do a reading for me. And we love it. We love hearing, we love other mediums to bring through our kids, whether I can sense my daughter or not. There's nothing better than hearing another. I mean, there are things better, but I mean, it's great hearing another mother say all these things and telling me, oh, your daughter was here when you, you know, decided to burn alcohol and started the big fire in the kitchen. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? It's just really neat. Yeah. And, and it's like, so question. you can do it with people, but with people that you really even know, totally know. And you're, you could be like, all of a sudden I'm seeing you making chocolate chip cookies and you're, and they're like, Oh my God, I went to the store and bought all the recipe for chocolate chip cookies. You know, and all you're doing is exercising your psychic abilities. So you don't need to put any stipulations on it. Just just try that one time this week. And then when we come back, you can kind of tell me how it went. Can you do things that help, like hold their hand or or is it or meditate while you're doing this? Or is there anything that could help you? Yeah. So if you meditate even for five or ten minutes before you do this, that's <clears throat> gonna help open your awareness. Meditation I is always good. You know, when I hold circles at my house, I've hold hundreds of them that I've recorded. We don't hold hands, but I know that like one of the pastors of one of the spiritual churches, she likes to put her hand on people's hands and then yep. see what she senses. So whatever works, don't, don't use not being in person with someone um, as like an excuse not to do it because you can also do it on the phone. And, and here's another thing you can do. You can do it for total strangers on Facebook too. You can say, I guarantee you if you're in any psychic group or on a thread or whatever, that if you say, Oh, I'm just practicing my developing my psychic abilities and I want people to practice on a bunch of people will private message you. So and then there's um, one thing I used to do. I haven't done it lately, but on Sunday nights, I used to go on Facebook after I had meditated. And then everybody that asked me or that would say, will you please pray for me? Will you please pray for my the nephew? He's in the hospital or whatever. I would just turn on the microphone of the cell phone and I would just start praying, hmm. you know, for that person. And any of that which is connecting to the spirit realm is going to make your spirit perception stronger. So that's kind of a different thing than a psychic reading. But at the same time, there's like little things you can do, even if you're housebound, even if you never get out, it, no matter what, there's things you can do from sitting right on your couch to help other people, to help other people and to help other people heal. And that just, that's the same energy. Almost everyone who develops psychic abilities also develops healing abilities as well. Because essentially you're praying, you're asking God to use you to okay. channel this healing energy and you're, um, and then that opens you up as well. So, okay. So, so do we have any questions? Is there a way to make it to where, something doesn't consume you like, uh, like to try like all week i've been consumed by there was a murder on our island and the man was beat to death and found in the marsh and everybody on this island knows who did it but the island is sweeping it under the carpet because they want people to come to the outer banks they don't want tourists not to come here and I got a message in my inbox from one of the people that works at Dollar General to tell me that to ask my daughter to cover herself better 
because she loves to wear, you know, cute, cute little clothes. And this person had threatened to rape his daughters and his wife, but it's now has consumed me about like him still being around and that he's not going to get caught. So they, they, they know who it is, but they did not arrest him. Right. Well, the island knows who it is because he threatened, he threatened, he said he wanted to kill the man, his name, Justin, that he, that he wanted to kill him and he wanted to rape his wife and his two daughters or something. He ended up dead on, uh, Valentine's. Oh, the killer, the killer ended up dead or the victim? No, the killer is the victim ended up dead. They found him dead, but are you saying the person who did the killing is alive still? And loose? Yes. And now <clears throat> the island is saying that it was not foul play. But he was found beaten so severely. And the whole island's going crazy. Like, how could you say that's not foul play? Yeah. So, so something that intense is going to consume you for a while. Because okay. there's things you need to process. So it's normal to be consumed by it. So that's the other thing. It's, it's, if, if, I mean, murder, you know, someone's threatened somebody's life and he's potentially loose and you have children you want to protect potentially walking around that right. that's a legitimate thing that's consuming your mind. It's legitimate because you're, it's, you know, you want to make sure you're safe. You want to make sure your daughter's safe. Is there anything you could do to drive her back and forth to work or you know and sometimes it's hard because you're at work too or whatever um right any anything in your life you can do to make yourself safer and then just probably if you limit your exposure to it like limit watching the news about it um for maybe an hour a day yeah but there's they, like no th things do consume us like that yeah there's like no news it's like they want it to be hush hush they just want it to go away yeah scary that's, part. that's really scary you know you could do stuff like something positive like get a candle for the guy who was victimized and and light oh, it for yeah. him and and you know in your house but not my, make it not make yourself publicly known or about all of it but yeah, it, i think daughter, i think it's legitimate it's it's there's something there that needs to be thought about okay you know you know She'll like, at times I'll be like, where are you? And it'll be like 10 o'clock. And she's like out in, out in the neighborhood cleaning up trash. Your daughter? She, yeah, she, she's 18 and she just, she hates when people throw trash out the window. So she'll be in our neighborhood. We live in the Outer Banks and uh -huh. she, she'll go out and she'll pick up trash. She'll have like a big garbage bag just picking up trash. And, and so have, like, you to her? Yeah. Have you talked to her about your concerns about this guy might kill someone else? I have, but you know, she's 18 and she just looks at me like, like she's invincible in a way. Like, you yeah. know, they just, you know, he's not going to touch me kind of thing, mom. Yeah. They're all like that. That's the problem with teenagers and young people. I don't think they get a sense of mortality. Yeah. yeah. No. So, so I think that's normal. What, everything you're feeling is normal. Okay. I mean, you Thank could you just say, I, I want to go with you then. Yeah, right. With okay. a flashlight <laughs> and a baseball bat. Right, and yeah. a gun. You know, it, Can it, I it's, say something? it's real scary. It's real yeah. scary. It's a, that's a legitimate thing to be concerned about and to be thinking about. And, um, you know, it really yeah. is. I, yeah. I remember with my daughter, too, is like, well, I'm going to take you to the ground floor of a hospital where everyone's having chemotherapy because you need to know not to smoke cigarettes. <laughs> and it's true. She's like, Mom, you're so stupid. <laughs> you know, yeah. they're kind of like that. But, Can yeah. I say something about this? What, yes. Elizabeth? Yeah, to Elizabeth. Um, I just wanted to say to uh, Kelly, maybe the police are doing everything they can, but they keep it hush-hush. Maybe they're waiting for him to slip up or they're watching him, you know, and and a lot of times if the police say things, people just go crazy, you know, and, and take it a step further, like the media. So they might be just keeping it real close to the vest until they can, you know, come up with something. It may not yeah, be Yeah, I was thinking nothing. about that too. Yeah, it might not be that they're doing nothing. 
it's the other like, thing most people don't know yeah. is um four out of five murders are never prosecuted so oh. I, all the time i have uh appointments with mothers of children who say the police in my town are corrupt um and and i'm like that could be true but Four out of five murders are never prosecuted. So we we watch the Gabby Petito and we watch this and we watch that where they spend millions of dollars, but most murders never get prosecuted. Most murders are like what you're experiencing now, Kelly. And okay. hopefully they uh, arrest that guy at some point. And I think it's a legitimate concern you have about your own daughter walking around at night. It's legitimate. Think, oh, of course. So I don't really know. You know, if he's in town all the time and he doesn't even care that the whole town thinks he did it. Like, he's just oblivious. He doesn't care. Yeah, so he might be a little sociopathic or psychopathic or something like that, which is even yeah. more dangerous. Right. Was the, the deceased person, the victim, was he a, I got confused with the story, a good guy or a bad guy? He was a good guy. He, okay. I mean, the loved him. I okay. mean, my daughter friends with the daughter of the the man that got killed and you know so it's her dad that got murdered and the whole town loved him his you know the whole town loved him yeah so the, the with the police what ha happens has to happen is they have to have physical evidence and they usually don't yeah <laughs> you know all the stuff they talk about dna this and thumbprints that uh, they usually don't have enough physical evidence for them to prosecute a case surprisingly they don't want the general public to know that right we right. watch all the tv mm -hmm. shows and they want the general public to believe that if you murder someone you're going to jail but the reality is the odds are you're not going to jail that's the sick part about it so i you know what you're why it's on your mind because you want to protect your daughter and because this is injustice and it happened near you so that's all that is stuff you you you'll have to process and yeah and i think it's completely normal for it to be on your mind 24 7 when your daughter's <laughs> walking around at night you know yeah. for sure for sure okay so i think is there any more questions before we go about this okay so so um this week at least you could call a stranger on the phone, maybe, but they don't answer anymore. Remember when we were kids and used to do that? You used to call Friend people call. on the phone book. Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> we used to have so much fun doing that. Now people don't have the answering machines to screen their call. So mm -hmm. but um yeah, try to get anybody you could know them and just say, Could I do a little I'm just wanna practice some psychic stuff and and stuff and if some people will try to cut you off real fast. You know, I even have people with readings that, and they're paying me like to do a reading. But then when I say something, they want to go, no, 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 like that, you know, and then I'll have to talk to them for a while till they relax and look, you, your heart needs to be open and stuff like that. So yeah, don't be intimidated. And, mm -hmm. and then next time we can talk about automatic writing and I'll try to have a couple things um, to talk about and, but if you have a notepad or some paper and a pencil, then then um, then like when I put stuff in the box or whatever, you know, last time I put six things in the box. So it was like a lot for people to remember. So if you have that next time, if you don't have it, that's okay. But if you do, then that's good too. Okay. So, okay. Well, See you guys. You. See you guys oh, in, a, bye. Bye. in a couple a weeks. Saturday. Bye -bye. Oh, a couple weeks. The, okay. the, the, the second. Bye. Oh, no, because you know what? I was confused again. Oh, yeah, John, I was confused about the calendar. We were in the month. It's the second and fourth <laughs> Wednesday and the third Saturday. Okay, so we missed okay. the third Saturday, so we're going to see each other on a Wednesday. Yeah, basically. the next time we'll okay. meet is the second Wednesday. So you could try, you could try, um, you could even do, you know, do more than one if you can, but try doing a few and just kind of see what happens. Don't worry about being wrong or anything like that. Just enjoy yourself. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye, Richard. Bye. Hey, Donna, is it okay to do a house rather than a person? Go for it. Let us know how it works. I'm in a psychic group on Facebook, and this oh, nice. one psychic has been posting pictures of old houses that she's oh, familiar ooh. with the history, and I've been giving readings on them. 
Mm-hmm. Go That's for great. it. Go for it. Go for it. And then also try to do one person too. And then let us know both of them how they work. Okay. My husband's raising his hand. <laughs> it's like, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have fun. Let him laugh. Okay. All Bye. right. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.